One aspect of this type of work in the wagon repair shop is that every wagon that comes in is a little different. We get to go through this wagon and find out what's wrong, what's broken, what's wore out, and then we get to figure out what needs to be done to get it fixed. So when we're given the directive to fix it, make it right, make it solid, make it safe, we go through this whole process of the initial inspection and we find out what's broken, what's been repaired in the past, how they did it. Oftentimes it is what I call kind of farmer job patched. And in the process, sometimes we can determine who made the wagon. This one seems to be a Studebaker. Judging from the half round spoke bands and the single carving in the hub. The tongue has had a few repairs over its lifetime. And just as much as we're looking for old, rotted, worn out wood, we're also looking for the wood that is solid and salvageable. We also see some unique ironwork that we have a little different from some other ones that we've posted. And here's a case where we see some flat strap iron that has been added to reinforce a brake instead of fixing the brake. It also appears that this wagon was one of a series of wagon pulled in tandem. So after this initial inspection becomes a process of dismantling the wagon so that we can begin the repair process. This wagon is going to be Dan's project. So Dan's going to go ahead and start to do the disassembly and Dan's actually going to do all the repairs on this wagon. Hope you enjoy! Over the years, many people have asked me where I learned to do what I do. And I have told them time and time again, the wagon actually becomes my teacher. So this process that Dan is going to go through is actually this process of learning how the wagons were built, how they were constructed, how the ironwork was put together, how they function. All this stuff is the, the teaching process that the wagon actually teaches us how the initial craftsman did it back in the day. And that's why I say our learning curve is never done. Each wagon is different. We're always learning something new because of the wide variety of wagons. So this learning process is just an ongoing, never-ending process. The wheels themselves are going to need some repairs and we're not going to spend a lot of time in this video focusing on the wheels. But when we do repair old wheels there is a little different approach. Uh, sometimes we have to replace valley sections and trying to save tenons we kind of look at it or approach it a little different. But there is one part of a Studebaker wheel that you never see until you disassemble it. And that's where the spoke goes into the hub. You'll see that the shoulder to the tenon is round instead of square, like all the other spokes. This is a distinct Studebaker style. So Dan's got the wheels fixed, replaced a few spokes, replaced a few fellow sections, reset the tires and put the majority of the original rim rivets back in. And this pile of pieces is all that's left of the running gear. So a little sanding of what's good, a little cleaning up, and we'll start to put this back together.
Now it's very common for these mortises in the bolsters to collect moisture and rot out. So some of these standards are usable, but Dan's going to make new bolsters for both the front and the back. The ears on this fifth wheel have been hammered over time and compressed too far down to fit on the new wood. So he's going to adjust them so they fit the new wood a little better. Well, we can use a router to kind of start the process of shaping. It's really not just like the old ones. So it gets down to a little bit of handwork, looking at the original back and forth, trying to make the new look like the old. Some of the iron comes off like nuts and bolts and gets painted, but some of it just remains like it was and we're going to stick it back. And while this might seem kind of odd, but our directions were to repair and make sound, not do all the prep work for the finish work.
Now, have you noticed the ironwork is a little different up around these standards? A little different from the ones that we made for the new sheep wagons. Now the axle hounds and stabilizers were pretty bad, so Dan's going to replace these. Oftentimes wear and tear, time, breakage will change these irons, so it takes a little bit to get them back once the wood has been repaired. With a little cleanup of the old hard dry grease, our front axle is back to where it's usable again. Axle hounds, stabilizers, new bolster on top. Dan's got this looking pretty good. So we'll continue with the back axle next week. And thanks for watching.